when we had last left Team Bald, they were continuing their exploration of the city of Baldur's Gate. And it was there that they had discovered the wondrous museum and temple to Gond. And it was in that place that they met a sneak thief by the name of Alora, who sought to steal some cool shit from inside of the museum. And Team Ball decided maybe they would work together. But perhaps most importantly, Team Bald remembered that they must set their sights upon stealing a telescope. And so, under the cloak of darkness, they would attempt it. This is Boulder's Gate Enhanced Edition. Welcome back. Let's unhide all of that and head on in. Right? Let's do a quick save as well, I've just in case. Had enough of this. There we are. I'm gone. So is it significantly more empty at night? It seems like that is definitely the case. Okay. I've done had enough Good. of this. Over here. Telescope. Well, that was extremely easy. <laughs> that was incredibly easy. Okay. Let's read about the telescope, I guess. While the physics behind a telescope have been well known for some time, the glass grinding skills required to actually construct one are still quite specialized. The lenses of this telescope are finely made, however, and its collapsible tubing has obviously been wrought by someone well versed in the delicate art of jewel setting and metalwork. Huh, makes sense. Okay, should we quick save again and look through the rest of this shit? Why not? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It's full of nothing. Okay. What's this over here? What is this? Here on the ground. What is this? Oh, it's a bolt. Okay. Where did my, um... There we go. Had my quick loot thing disappear. Alright. More thieving. What have we got? A rogue stone. That seems good. Okay. Star sapphire. Great. How about over here? Nope. Nothing else. Okay. Well. <laughs> wonderful. Lovely. Should I we head over to the temple itself? Well, we don't really need to, do we? There was no reason to be over there. Let's head on out. Let's see. We should also probably move all of this stuff, shouldn't we? Your potion case and gem bag. There we are. Lovely. Okay, good. Now the real question is, where the fuck was the dude we were looking for? <laughs> where was the the Breville Vleck dude? The stuff of legend. Oh shit. Yeah, larceny at the Hall of Wonders. Waiting for us at the Elf Song. Okay, that's helpful. But where... Where was that? <laughs> where was I've Elf Song? Had of this. I don't know. Should we go look for it immediately or be on our way? Well, now let's go look for it. Right. It shouldn't take... It shouldn't be too difficult to find it. That's one of the... the actually, the downsides I've found of going around through Baldur's Gate... It's just kind of finding shit, you know? I feel like, uh, I don't know, the pace was a little bit quicker and more f enjoyable in the overworld than actually when you're in Baldur's Gate. I don't know, maybe I'm off base, maybe it's because we're, we're still, like, making our first runs through and, like, sifting through shit in Baldur's Gate. Maybe that's why. But I don't know, I think I found myself enjoying my time more exploring, like, the main overworld than actually the city. And that's mostly due in part to the fact that it's it's kind of difficult to navigate the city, you know? It's difficult to find all these named locations in the city because each of the quadrants isn't terribly well-labeled and all that, right? And it's it's not a big deal to go around back and forth, but it is kind of inconvenient, you know? Let's see. Shit, none of these are the ones that we're looking for. I'm gone. 
Okay. So which one am I still needing to go to? Did I go to this one? I... Shit. <laughs> Where is the elf song? I thought we'd already been through it, but apparently not? Huh. I could have sworn it was on, like, the eastern end of town. Maybe it is, and I just moused over it like a fool. Huh. Like, wasn't it one of these? Is it back in, like, the main section? Maybe. Or the, the opening area? Oh, it is. Okay. Here we go. Which isn't to say, like... There's not cool and interesting quests in actual Baldur's Gate. It's just, it's kind of a task to find them, you know? Like, it feels like maybe one third, if not more, of the buildings we go into are just nothingness. And then every so often we'll encounter something that's extremely fucking cool or funny or whatever, right? Whereas, you know, when we were in the overworld, we could kind of count on, okay, we're either going to be exploring this and just killing a bunch of dudes here... And that'll be kind of fun on its own. Or, you know, reliably, kind of on every big map, we would go around and find someone, right? In every tile, there'd be some sort of fun oddity, and it would take us almost no time to find them, right? I don't know. Just something off about the city itself. This way. Not, not sort of being quite as fun as exploring the overworld. I don't know. Maybe I'm off base with that. I don't know, maybe that was also a similar thing that people said way back in the day, or people still hold to this day. Okay. Brevlik. I forgot how this person sounded. Hello again, my roguish compatriot. I heard this morning that there was a mysterious break-in at the Hall of Wonders. It said that the crafty burglars were in, like, ghosts and gone before the guard even had a chance to yell halt. Oh, it's like an adventure tale starring you and me. You are well worth your pay, my friend, well worth it. Here is your 500 gold and a beautiful little trinket for my own personal collection. It's a sorrow to part with it, but this more than makes up. Goodbye and good fortune be on you. Okay, well, got a lot of XP out of it at the very least. It was no trouble fetching Brevlik's telescope for to him at the Elf Song, turning it over for a reward. Yeah, it was incredibly easy. Should we rest? Get some spells back? Or are we fully loaded? Yeah, we could use some resting. Let's do a quick no rest. Now the dinner here has, like, double the capacity. May as well. There we go. Good. Okay, let's head on out. And we still have to go to this Rage Dude's place or whatever. Right? Okay, head on I've down this way. Had of this. And maybe also a contributing factor is like the city is so big, so it's kind of time consuming to just travel across this area that we've already treaded before. I don't know. Like I feel like it's alleviated in future games where you can, where you have access to like some degree of time dilation. You can run it like this way. You can make the I don't know make the simulation go at double or triple speed, you know? So, like, moments like this where it's like, yeah, we, we totally already know what's going on with this area. We're just getting from point A to point B, right? Whereas, like, in the overworld, we would still be going back and forth, but it would still... we Most of the time when we would do that, it would be that we were uncovering new stuff. Because the places that you would have to retread in, like, Nashkel or Barragost, you know... They were fairly sh uh, small places here and there, right? You didn't have to travel a shit ton. Okay, Rage Fast Zone. Here we are. We'll do a quick save out here. And like I said, it isn't to say that the quests are not cool. Certainly, there's really cool shit going on in the city. It's just sort of the navigation of it all. had like, has kind of screwed over the pacing, I would say. At least for me. Let's see. We have to pick our way in here. Rage fast home. Maybe we should wait until night? Eh. This way. Alright. If I remember correctly, quite a few people have a bone to pick with Rage Fast, right? Should we actually Oh shit, I accidentally quick loaded. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. Mixed up my my this bindings way. there with Vampire the Masquerade. 
Okay, so I am looking for our journal here. Let's see. So we need Archaeon and Nemfri? No, that's not it. Is it a ring for a lady? No, an angel skin ring, which we may already have on us. I'm not sure now. Garak the Diseased. Hmm. Hiding place behind a painting in three old kegs. I don't think we've been there yet. Hmm. Investigating the Iron Throne, that's main quest stuff. Missing citizens. We don't know yet too much about that. Oh, fuck. We never turned in the gauntlets. Oh, God. Okay. The captive nymph. Is that it? I thought there was more than just the nymph situation. Okay. A mage named Rage Ragefast holds a nymph prisoner, and we have agreed to liberate her for the mage Ramazith. Ragefast awaits us at his home, just northeast of the Hall of Wonders. All right. Oops. Let's quick save again, just in case, and head on in there. Oh, there's the nymph already. Okay. She's significantly bigger than I was expecting. <laughs> when I hear nymph, I think something that is, I don't know, like the size of like a two liter bottle of soda or whatever, or like a gallon of milk, slightly bigger than that. Okay. Rage fast. Now know thee well, I cannot let thee leave. We are meant to be together, whether ye know it or no. Destiny or no, I'm not long for this place. Jeez. What? What bandit dares enter the home of Ragefast? Identify your purpose here, that I might know what to put on thy tombstone. Strong words, mage, have ye the will to back them up? Dare you speak of me as a bandit when you commit such crimes as you do? I should like as little trouble as possible. If you simply hand over the nymph, I shall return to Ramazith. I think we would go with this. Strong words, mage, have ye the will to back them up? I know not what has brought thee here, but six shall carry thee out. Wow, okay, what a line. Alright, let's fuck them up. Big time. Okay. And let's also try and get out a little bit of horror here. Right? Yeah. Let's see if we can afflict them. Over here, we can also throw some bugs on them. Good. Oh my gosh, you're already, like, annihilated big time. <laughs> wow, he is terrible! He's no good! Jeez, we annihilated the hell out of him! Oh my god! I didn't think it would be that easy! Okay. Sure. Let's see, where can I stash some trash? How about over here? There you go. Khalid, you'll take that. Hope you don't mind. Good. And let's suck these up as dinner here and ID them. Mage robe. Knave's robe. A favorite among mage slash thieves. The knave's robe has been enchanted to shield its wearer from the blades and poisons of any darkened ally. Alley. <laughs> as... With others of its type, however, its use is restricted to students of the arcane. Slashing. Okay, this is its specialty. Another wand. Wow, wand of paralyzation. Okay. Seems really good. How about this one? An amulet? The protector plus one. Wow, another one of these. Isn't this the third one we've seen? And the second one we've got, yeah. That we've got to equip. Hmm. But I think, didn't we already check that no one can actually get make make use of it in our group? Isn't that we what we, like, deemed? Yeah. No one can actually benefit from it. <laughs> Unfortunately enough. Okay. Let's see. Mage book. Do I have any more IDs? Nah, we're all out. Because I do have another item that needs identification, don't I? Let's see. Yeah, this wand. I guess we'll move it over there. Okay. Let's speak with the nymph. This way. Hello, Abella. Destiny or no, 
I'm not long for this place. <laughs> okay. My poor rage fast. Like many humans, he could not understand the feelings my kind elicits. What of you, saviour? I should like to believe I am free, but your kind often does good things for bad reasons. What are your plans for me? You are free by my hand, and none shall cage you again. I have a duty to complete, regardless of how I feel. You are to be delivered to Ramazith, but I don't imagine his treatment of you could be worse than rage fasts. Ah, of course. Yeah, you're a very sentient being. You are not just some sort of creature. Okay. Well, I feel like now we have a better understanding of a nymph. All right. Yeah, you should not be fucking in a cage and subjugated. You are like a an intelligent being. <laughs> like, that's super fucked. Okay, you are free by my hand. None shall cage you again. It will be good to feel the grass beneath my feet once more. If you would just release this restraining collar, I will regain a measure of my talents. I thought it only ornamental when he gave it to me. Please, will you help me? <laughs> I guess we did it when we click continue. My gratitude is boundless. Please, take this cloak Ooh, made from my hair <laughs> oh no to remember me by <laughs> the fuck you all not only is it weird that this cloak is magical i assume and made from your hair right sure if you are some sort of creature from the wilds maybe it makes sense but it is also kind of weird that you kept it with you. It's kind of weird that you've just been holding on to it. <laughs> I doubt I shall seek the company of men for some time. Goodbye. Wow. Holy shit, you have teleported. Ab Abella is free from her confinement at last. Okay. I bet the other wizard is going to be angry at us. Oh shit, it has charges on it. Huh. The fabled nymph cloak is renowned for its ability to increase the charisma of even the most surly, surly dwarf. A Cormiran noble, hoping to make her politically convenient marriage more palatable, palatable, apparently went to great expense to obtain one for herself and another for her husband. And then the charge ability is it charms creatures on touch. Wow. Okay. I mean, I guess we should give it to Emelyn. Whispers of silence, non-detectable by magical means such as detect and vis and scrying. Which, frankly, we don't even use that much. I think the bonus to charisma will be more helpful here. Okay. Sure. Anything I'm else? Gone. Let's I've see. Got Let's this. look through your books. If you have any. Oh shit, we should probably check if any of these are rigged to blow. Now nah, we're good. Perhaps is there another floor here? Not quite as much help as I thought. Nah. Okay. Let's see. Check you this want one. It? You've got it. Nope, nothing. All empty. Wow. Okay. I've done had enough of this. Yeah, we should still check in with the other dude and see what terrible shit he'll be up to. Okay. Rage fast, so sure. Head on up here. Let's see. This one is barred from entry. Yeah, we're good. Let's head to the next section. Okay. Up here, this little tiny corner. Okay. So what have we got here? De Grodel's house, Tavern and Inn, Quinn's house, and Helm and Cloak. As well as some unmarked places. Okay. I've done had enough of this. Let's see over here. It's locked. Okay. Quick save again, and let's pick inside. I've done had enough of this way. Good. Oh shit! Helmed horror. Doom guard. Whoa. Okay. 
Oh my gosh. They're really getting us badly. Invisible Stalker. Holy shit, what is this place? Okay. Well, let's throw some Cure Light Wounds around. There we go. Dinner here. Also throw out haste on the ground. Good. I will try to heal up Emwyn as well. Well, actually, Emwyn, drink some of your potion. Right? Do some of that. Maybe I'll enrage, actually. Okay. Good. Holy hell. Can we have her run out the front door? Yeah, okay, that works great. <laughs> that actually works amazingly well. Okay. Cool. Let's see, so if anyone gets low, we'll just have them run out the front fucking door. Alright, let's see, let's throw another heal onto Khalid. There we go. Heal up. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Dinner here. Let us get you some... I wonder if these things are, like, susceptible to horror. Let's throw it down right there. Okay, good. And let's try... Hmm, let's bless everyone up. Jesus, this music is going buck wild. Jesus, they are taking quite the beating. Okay. Let's see. Magic missile on this thing. Actually, we should probably get her out the front door. Oh shit, it followed! I'm gone. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> let's go on back inside. I did not think that they could do that. That makes sense. Unexpected, but it makes sense. I'll need it. I'll do my best. Okay, Khalid, you get the hell out of there. Start ranging. Okay. Jahira, do you have any more heals? No, you don't. Okay. Holy hell. Let's put, like, Doom on the Doom Guard? I guess? There we go. Let's get our heavy hitter melee on the same dudes. There we are. Dinner here. Keep throwing out magic missile. Good. Holy shit. What is this place? Whose house was this? This is like the fucking wildest house ever. Okay. Let's try and throw some doom on one of them. This one, why not? Oh shit, Jahira's getting fucked up. Big time. Uh-oh. Ooh, run away! Thankfully, haste just lets you, like, kite forever if you're careful enough. But the real question is, are we? Are we careful enough? Okay. Good. Let's see, dinner here. Cast your shit again. Oh, whoops. Do not cast it on Minsk. Cast it on this thing. Should bounce around. Uh-oh. They're coming in for the kill. Ooh, get out of there! Okay, the haste is worn off. That's fine, though. Oh, God. Did it actually go outside? Oh, shit! Okay, uh... <laughs> They'll go up that way. Keep running! Flee the scene! Okay. I need Holy shit! Lest my Good. Got this asshole. Great. Okay, Minsk, are you... Jesus, drink another drink there. Good. Are they still being chased by this fucking thing? <laughs> yeah, they are. Okay. Let's keep kiting them around the city. <laughs> Amazing. That's good. Oh, look, everyone is, like, terrified as well. Makes sense. Okay, let's get the rest of the team outside. Good, and we will... ...waylay it. <laughs> How fucking wild. There it is. Okay. Lovely. Okay, let's have Mince get back the fuck off. All right, we got it. Oh shit, it's turning. Oh god, what is that? You got it. Did they all do that? 
What an amazing... Wow! What a wild oh, encounter! They were really powerful, too. Oh, they turned into money. Oh, this is a naked person of some sort. As good as done. What is this place? Who is the grotto? For the group. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. There's a fun hat. It does the same as all the others. I take the money, I guess. Jesus. Let's go to the inn real quick. We need to heal up for sure. I'm gone. I don't know who the hell the grotto is, but fuck. They had some tough customers up in there. Oh. <sighs> Man, that was some quick thinking to just, like, run out the front fucking door with them chasing us. <laughs> okay. There we go. Get everyone in here. Hello, pal. Oh, God. I hope you're not here to try and kill us. Hello, pal. Glad to make your acquaintance there, by golly. What might you be needing from old Connolly Finn? A tale of treachery amidst the nobles, or a bit of back alley skullduggery? I hear many things while tipping a bit of ale. Oh, uh, what do you know of the Iron Throne and their activities here in town? The Iron w I know little of merchants and business. Tales of stuffy old storekeeps don't make for good ale tales. Now, if you'd wanted a ribald story of a noble lass and the gutter snipe rust about she was seeing at this on the sly, then I could have helped you. Nothing more than fluff to entertain for a moment or more. Uh, then tell me what the common folk are talking about these days. What bullish tales have been thrown about the bar lately? What are the common folk talking about? The common folk? I don't know anyone that likes to be referred to in that way. Oh, shit. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I think most would tell you that the nobles are much less interesting than the common folk. We are free to go where we wish and speak to whomever we please. Nobles must worry about being seen with the wrong sort or being caught in the wrong place. Many a tale has been spilled about the hapless efforts of noble fools trying to cover their exploits. Many a tale in this here bar, actually. Wait, will you tell me more? Or was that... Okay, I think that was just a random encounter. Okay. some whiskey? If your complaints about this service, there's a wall out back that'll be glad to hear them. So what would you like? So would you like a drink? Yeah, give me the royal room. There we go. And let's see, do you have anything new to say in this part of town? I don't think so. Okay. Let's see, we also have this wand to identify. Wand of lightning. Very well. Okay. Done had enough of this. Before we explore the rest of this inn though, let's exit and go check the rest of Granodal's or Gr Grondel's funhouse. This way. Or De Grodel's house. Do we know a De Grodel? I don't think so. Huh. Just some, like, really difficult dudes inside. Alright. In we go. This way. Is it just one floor? It might well be. Okay. Let's head on over here, check these books and stuff. Quick save in case there's some other creature that will spawn in. Oh no, wait. Oh, it's DeGrodel! Okay, well, let's go in here and speak with DeGrodel as a team, just in case. DeGrodel, were these your monsters, or were you being under attack by them? You need something, stranger. You have done well to bypass all my guardians. I should be angry with you, but to be truthful, I've been on the lookout for skilled adventurers. So I would ask you, do you wish to help me in a task, or would you rather die? Don't threaten us, mage. We've dealt with far more powerful than you. We want to die? <laughs> what is it you want us to do? What do you want? 
First of all, my name is DeGrodel. I can only assume that you're Lila Schnub, the adventurer who has been stirring up so much trouble in the recent past. Now that introductions are done, let us get down to business. My task is very simple. Some years ago, an evil band of mercenaries were all petrified while trying to break into the home of Ramazith. For those of you with a limited vocabulary, petrified means turned to stone. Anyhow, one of those adventurers had in his possession an item of power, the Helm of Balduran. Ramazith didn't know this at the time, and so... After turning them all to stone, he simply sold their bodies to an art collector, living in the heart of Baldur's Gate. What I would like you to do is find these statues, turn them back to flesh, and take the item. How much are we going to get paid for this service? How do we turn them from, from stone back to flesh? How did you come by this information? Yeah, I think we, we have spells that we could use. How do you know? How did you find out about this? How I came by this information is unimportant. Suffice to say, no one else knows of this, and I would like to keep it that way. How do we turn them from stone back to flesh? Very simple, really. I will give you these six scrolls of stone to flesh. Use them on the statues when you find them. The estate can be found just west of the fairgrounds in the center of town. Good luck, and don't entertain any thoughts about betraying me. It could be very hazardous to your health. The Helm of Balduran. Isn't that the founder of the city? A wizard called De Grodel wants me to find the Helm of Balduran, which I should be able to find on the petrified bodies of a group of adventurers, currently held by an art dealer on an estate just west of the fairgrounds. Once I have the helm, I can find De Grodel in his estate in the northwest part of town. Very well. Okay. This well, way. De Grodel, are you going to get mad if I look through your books? Will this anger this you? I have quick save, just in case. Eh? Splint mail. You angry about that? Seems as though you were not. Okay. Let's see. Fuck me. The inventory situation is getting dire. <laughs> I think we may just end up selling these a lot of this shit off, right? Splint mail plus one. Anyone want these? Hmm. No, we don't even need it. Yeah. It is of little use to us. Very well. Should I just pop this Tome of Understanding on myself? I'm very tempted to. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. There we are. Good. Eh. Ah, because that was the one we scammed for, remember? Okay, let's move that back. Okay. Anything else here of interest? Yeah, let's move that over onto me. Good. Okay. I'm gone. Well, thanks for just not giving a shit about any of this, DeGrodel. You weird asshole. Okay. Let's move uh, the rest of Team Bald over here. Well, let's have Imowen I've sift through some of this other of junk, this. just in case. Okay, anything? Eh. Oh, shit! There was another beast! Okay. I've have at thee! Go, Team Bald! Why is Mince going backwards? Okay. Jahira fall back. Just a bit. Okay. There we are. Oh, good God. <laughs> good. Okay, we're good now. Very well. Oh, no. Dinner here is under attack. Is she good yet? Okay, we're good now. Let's have Emowyn move back a bit, too. I will pop in Rage. Lovely. Okay, dinner here. 
Let's have you cast Magic Missile onto this thing. And you, let's throw down some Cure Light Wounds onto Khalid. No. Not. Holy shit, Khalid, you move the fuck back. Try. Oh god. Good. Uh, I'm let's gone. get Emwin out of there. Good. Oh my gosh. All right, fire away. Jeez. Not a fan of the eerie red shit that emanates from them upon death. This way. Don't know what's going on there, but it ain't good. I am gone. All right. Did someone's weapon break and all that? Is that what that was? Or is that just like a byproduct of combat with that kind of creature? I think this so. Way. Okay. Over here. It's locked. Give it a quick pick. A little bit of money. Thanks to Grodel. Okay. Let's head this on way. out of here. Find this, this and... Let's see. Oh shit. Took a little damage there. Alright. Hmm. How do we want to handle this? I'm thinking, you know what? We'll, we'll maybe end it a little bit early. And in between videos, you know what? Fuck it. We're just going to sell off a whole bunch of shit. Fuck it. We'll go back here to this section of town. I am gone. And in between videos, I'll navigate around town and sell off a bunch of stuff at like sorcerous sundries and all that. Right? Of course, if you'd like to stick around, we will at the very least be doing a little bit of reading. And you know, we're kind of around that time anyhow. Let's see, we'll just wait for everyone to get over there. Because I kind of don't like pausing it with the entirety of Team Bald split. You know? Good lord. Those uh, weird like, I don't know. I don't know what you would call them. Helmed horror? It seems like they're like animated armor or whatever. Very... Reminiscent of Castlevania. Though, does this predate Castlevania? No, it doesn't, does it? Yeah, Castlevania predates this. Okay. Though I don't know if, like, the animated armor enemies were in the early Castlevanias. I don't know. I only got on board with Symphony of the Night. Okay. Let's take a look. What have we got? How about this? The Sisters of Light and Darkness. We picked this up earlier. Let me cross this off my list. There we go. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a quick drink here. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. History of the Sisters of Light and Darkness. This was the birth of the world and the heavens. After Lord Ao created wet realm space, there was a period of timeless nothingness. A misty realm of shadows before light and dark were separate entities. Within this dim chaos stalked thirteen lords of shadow, the Sh Shadavari. Whether they came from elsewhere or are children of the shadow itself, none can say. Eventually this primordial essence coalesced into twin beautiful goddesses who were yin and yang to each other. They were so close, they thought of themselves as one being. The two-faced goddess created the heavenly bodies of the crystal sphere, and together infused them with life to form the Earth Mother, Shantea. Although Shantea has since contracted, contracted her essence to encompass only Abir Toril. In the beginning, she embodied all matter in realm space. This new universe was lit by the face of the silver-haired goddess, who called herself Selun. Didn't we read this? Maybe this was before I started marking them down. I don't know. By the, he called herself Selun, and darkened by the welcoming tresses of the raven-haired goddess, Shar, but no heat or fire existed within it. Shantea begged for warmth, so that she could nurture life and living creatures upon the planets that were her body and limbs. And the two sisters who were one uh, became divided, as for the first time they were of two minds. Silvery Saloon contested with her dark sister over whether or not to bring further life to the worlds. During this great conflagration, 
The gods of war, disease, murder, and death, among others, were created from residues of deific battle. At one point during the battle, Saloon seized the advantage and reached across time and space to a land of eternal fire, fighting the pain of the blaze which burned her sorely. She broke off a fragment of that ever-living flame and ignited the heavenly bodies so that it burned the sky and warmed Shantea. Incensed, Shar redoubled her attack on her injured twin and began. Yeah, maybe we didn't read a, read this. We only we read of a different story that mentioned them, or a different book that mentioned them. Incensed, Shar redoubled her attack on her injured twin and began to snuff out all light and heat throughout the crystal sphere. Again, Selun gave of herself and tore the divine essence of magic from her body, flinging it desperately at her sister in defense of life in the sphere. This essence entered Shar, ripped an equal portion of energy from her, and reformed behind her as the goddess of magic, known now as Mistra, but then as Mistrel. Though Mistrel was composed of both light and dark magic, she favored her first mother, Selun, initially, allowing the silver goddess to win an uneasy truce with her more powerful dark twin. Consumed by bitterness at her defeat, Shar vowed eternal revenge. The twin goddesses contested for aeons as life struggled to exist on Toril, and the other planets under Shantae's watchful gaze. Shar remained powerful, but bitterly alone, while Selun waxed and waned in power, often drawing strength from her allied daughters and sons and like-minded immigrant deities. Over time, Shar grew strong again, aided by the Shadavari, who preferred night to blinding light, and who stalked the realm, seeking to meld light and dark into shadowy chaos once again. Shar's plot to reform the world after her own desires was undone when Azuth, the High One, formerly the greatest of all mortal spellcasters, and now consort to Mistra, incarnate successor to Mistrel, found a way to imprison the Shadavari in a pocket-sized crystal sphere located beyond the edges of the world, by creating the illusion of a realm of shadows. The Lords of Shadow were drawn to investigate, and before they discovered the trick, Azuth imprisoned the Shadavari with the Shadow Star, a key of shadows forged by Gaunt. Oh shit! The High Lord then hurled the key into the endless reaches of the cosmos, allowing life to flourish on in Chantea's loving hands. Huh. So are they also represented by, like, celestial bodies? Right? Huh. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the raven-haired one, Char. At first I, I thought that they were meant to represent the celestial bodies of, like, the moon and the sun. But I think it's actually the moon and the void of space, right? Shar is the void of space. No heat and or fire existed within it. Yeah, Shar is, like, the ever-expanding cosmos. Okay. And maybe Shantea is actually... Is Shantea the sun? Is Shantea meant to be the celestial body of the sun? Maybe? And the idea is that the moon came first and then ignited the sun? Is that how it is? I'm not sure. May though maybe Shantea is the planet. Or a plane of existence where, like, mortal beings exist. Hmm. Okay. Very fascinating. Like, if none of these people are... Hmm. Yeah, the twin goddess goddesses contested for eons as life struggled into existence on Toril, 
and the other planets under Shantae's watch. Yeah, Shantae is the sun then, right? And initially started out as not ignited until the moon, say Loon, offered something to ignite her. Okay. Fascinating stuff. And Myst- Mistra doesn't have some sort of celestial body that represents, I don't know, their existence. It's just magic in general as a concept. Huh. All right. Fascinating stuff. Should we read another one? I feel like we could read another one. How about something less high concept, something a little bit more mundane, like the history of Dombroth? Why not? History of Dombroth. Oh, shit, it's quite long. Okay. (laughs) There's actually a lot to do about Dombroth. History of Dombroth. The nation of Dombroth was formed out of a barbarian kingdom almost half a millennium ago by a powerful alliance of priestesses of Loviatar and the drow from the city of Tilindet. In 211 Dale Reckoning, fleeing from the destruction of the homeland by the then-great kingdoms of Unther and Mulharand, four tribes of barbarians entered Dombroth. They found a coast where the dolphins danced and plains where the grass was long. They roamed from the borders of the walls of Halrua as far east as the current borders of Estegund. They soon became known as... Arkayun, or People of the Wind. In 545 Dale Reckoning, Jesus, that's quite a, yeah, that's like 250 plus, okay. A great war chief, Reinhard, arose to lead the tribes. The halflings of Luiren, who we had just read about, were quickly enslaved, oh, <laughs> and several of the coastal cities of Durpar were captured or razed. Estegan fell to his rule, and eventually Reinhar turned his attention to Halrua. An army of 40,000 horsemen and a fleet of 50 ships mounted a coordinated attack, and even though Reinhar was able to get beyond the walls of Halrua and occupy the cities of Mythil, Galdel, and Zalsu, their magics proved to be more than a match for the invaders. Reinhar was finally defeated and a great battle at Silazir by the archmage Mycontal and his, dro- his troop of wizards. Reinhard's son, Reinhard II, took command of the army and set out on a two-month overland retreat. He arrived home with a thousand surviving men and no shaman. Reinhard II proved to be as good a ruler in defeat as his father was in war. He consolidated his forces and pulled home almost all of his troops, as he knew the defeat made them tempting prey for raiders and encroaching monsters. But these are... These are the terrible shitty people still, right? Hmm. Yeah. These are... Yeah, they're they're terrible. Dombroth is awful. Okay. Yeah, just double-checking. They're... Yeah, Dombroth... Sucks. (laughs) Sucks. <laughs> okay. As far as I can tell from reading this. All right. Reinhard II, he, he consolidated his forces and pulled home almost all of his troops as he knew that the defeat made them tempting prey for raiders and encroaching monsters. This action allowed for the safe development of his peoples. By the time Reinhard was king in 802 DR, the ninth Reinhard was king in 802 DR, the Archaeans were fat and lazy. Reinhard the Ninth, or Reinhard the Foolish, as he is more commonly known, insisted on expanding his nation to gain more gold to finance his military campaigns. He ordered the mining of many rich loads of silver and electrum in the Knollwatch Mountains. But before his plans of expansion could begin, the miners encountered the drow of Talinder. The drow were outraged and began a steady series of raids and attacks on the, on the Archaeun strongholds. 
whole villages were destroyed overnight and no trace of the invaders can be found. I mean, they... The Archaeans are the people under Reinhar's, uh, all the Reinhar family, right? They're like all the military focused like fascist assholes who went around conquering the shit out of people, enslaving the halflings of Leyrun, right? They're terrible. This this makes them seem really bad. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them being wiped out by the drow. <laughs> Reinhar the Ninth committed the foolhardy action of attacking the drow in retaliation, while the Archaeans managed to get a force into the drow city. This action only succeeded in uniting the normally chaotic drow. For once, the full power of a drow city was turned against an enemy. Right, and isn't this... We read about this in one of the drow-focused books about the city, about how they were united. Wasn't it under an attacking force, an orc, I think it was? I'm not sure. But definitely they were united uh, by way of being attacked. The battle moved quickly or quickly moved back to the surface. Reinhard's raiders were wiped out, leaving Reinhar only a small portion of his original military. This was not enough for the drow, who demanded total enslavement of the entire surface nation. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> fire with fire, I guess. Fuck. The Archaeans resisted valiantly, and the war went on for three decades at tremendous cost in life to both sides. Finally, the drow had the Archaean forces cornered at Malduir. Almost without hope, the defenders were overjoyed when a group of half-elven pilgrims appeared on the scene. The high priestess, Kathir Shintar, offered the aid of her clerics to help defend the city, and Reinhar took this to be an omen from the gods. A priestess was placed with almost every company. That's fascinating. But are they not... Aren't they the same assholes? Let's go back and look at this. Yeah, they soon became known as Archaean, people of the wind. Yeah, Reinhar led to, rose to lead the tribes. Yeah, so like 300 years before all this shit with the drow went down, they were enslaving the halflings of this place, right? They captured or raised several coastal cities. They were, they were awful. They were truly awful. Fuck them. <laughs> right? Okay. Within a ten day, the drow struck. I mean, did they have like some sort of internal societal revolution in this time? Like by the time Reinhard II or third or whoever it was were out of the picture and we're finally now on the ninth? Were they like a, a different society that weren't about, you know, conquering and raising and enslaving people? Because <laughs> if not, they seem pretty fucking rotten. All right. Let's see. Oh, jeez. I've lost my place here. Let's see. Hold, let's see. Full power on the enemy. A priestess. Okay. Within a ten day, the drow struck. The priestesses did indeed prove to be of great aid, but to the drow. Of great, of great aid, but to the drow. Every priestess turned on the Archaeans, and Cathir herself slew Reinhar. The drow were still weakened by the battle, and only the presence of the priestess enabled them to win. Cathir, realizing the unique advantage she possessed, made a deal that even the suspicious drow embraced. Her priestesses would rule the land, and in exchange they would provide access to the surface for drow trading weapons, slaves, and supplies. So they're only marginally better than the fucking Reinhar, right? These priestesses? Because they're still permitting slave trade, just as the drow who fought against them were all about. <laughs> right? It's... It sounds like a very marginal improvement over the Reinhar family or bloodline. The drow were delighted with this brazen offer from a surface dweller. Reinhar had been slain and the insult avenged 
and after thirty years of war, the drow were not particularly interested in Dombroth. They did insist, however, on taking the best captured males as slaves. Cool. Kathir very quickly agreed to this, seeing the males as an obstacle to her own power. Yeah, they're, everyone in this story is just a different degree of shitty. All of the, the nice people are only slightly less shitty than the last asshole. <laughs> or I say story, but in this uh, anthology of history, this recollection of historical events, Kathir ruled for 205 years. She fulfilled her promise to make Dombroth, or the Nation of Pain, a bastion of evil. And Okay, so we're just out. Okay. If, if there was any doubt up to this point, yes, they are all really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, a bastion of evil, the Nation of Pain. In her time, Kathir saw the priesthood of Loviatar expand to thousands, and the faith in the beast lords previously worshipped by the Archaeans was nearly eradicated. Many of the Archaeans were able to escape their new mistresses and flee to Swagdar. <laughs> wow, when do I learn the history of Swagdar? There they resumed their almost forgotten nomadic life. Where did these terrible priestesses come from again? Where did they find them? Let's see. Finally, the drow had the arcane forces. Uh, oh, the just the high priestesses of Kathir Shintar. They just offered help. And they, like, staged a coup, essentially, within their their nation or whatever. Okay. Sure. Okay, let's go and continue here. The priestesses of Loviatar continued to enjoy good relations with the drow, and some even took mates, creating a drow, a race of drow half-elves. These dark half-elves became known as the Krintri, or Noble Ones. Most of the priestesses of Loviatar, though many, most are priestesses of Loviatar, though many are mages as well. They consolidated their power, learning much of the area from the Shabali, or Lower Ones, as the Archaeans are now called. The capital of Dambroth was established at Kathir, built after Kathir's passing and named in her honor. Her death came at the hands of her daughter, Felina, who had grown tired of waiting for her mother to die. Felina ruled for only five years, however, before her own daughter, Kathake assumed the throne in the same fashion. Kathake ruled for 54 years, eventually falling in battle against a gold dragon. Holy shit. She died childless, and her niece, Melanith, assumed the throne. Melanith faced an increasing population and unrest among males who longed to, for a return to their prestige of old. Melanith did not return their previous status, but she did make use of them. Fearing that the great nations of Mulhurand and Unther might rise again, she decided that mundane tasks, such as defense of the kingdom, would be handled by men. She was the first to name a male to the post of war chief. Sadalar, a sentry, became the queen's consort. His term as war chief was characterized by widespread bribery and corruption. He was, however, responsible for getting many privileges returned to the Archaeans. After Melanith's rule, the Shabali were considered second-class citizens rather than slaves. Wow, okay. I guess, yeah, I guess it's an improvement. Like I said, it's only marginally better. <laughs> Though males were granted more power during her rule, Melanith also solidified the split between the sexes. While the rulers of Dombroth had been females for over two centuries, it was more because of competence than gender. Melanith, however, decreed that men could have no authority except over other men. The female-led hierarchy of Loviatar was quick to back this move. 
many of the bravest and best men of the kingdom perished in raids on Estigand, Durpar, and the bandit tribes of Veldorn, and against the gnolls that have that had returned to the Knoll Watch Mountains. Some even fought at the side of the drow in their battle with the with the Svrfneblin city of Aventine. The deep gnomes were destroyed, but so were the Shabali. The drow and the sentry were largely unharmed, and for their aid, the sentry were rewarded with a number of drow males to breed into their race. Melanith took a drow male as her consort to replace Shadalar, who had perished in the conflict. The drow Nim Inth Inth <coughs> Jeez Name was so hard to pronounce, it got me. The drow Nim Inthig fathered three daughters and a son. It was at this time that Melanith began the isolationist policy that Dambroth still follows today. Jeez, let me take a drink after that one. All right, sorry. Melanith ruled for 156 years. Her daughter, Ossetil, for 125. The current queen of Dombroth, Yanandra, who is known in Dombroth as the Pirate Queen, is said to have sailed as far south as Zakhara on pillaging raids. Yanandra has been ruling for 71 years and is beginning to show signs of age. She has three daughters as well. Lua Theron, Meltruil, and Hasifir. While she does remain extremely popular, especially to the century, the children of leaders in this land are not known to patiently wait their turn. Yeah, what a nightmare place! What a nightmare land! It starts bad and... It continues to be bad, just only slightly less bad. <laughs> Good God. What a horrific place. All right. Dombroth. No good. Sucks ass. <laughs> well, like I said, in between videos, I'll probably sort through inventory a little bit. I'll, I'll just sell off some shit. Right? What's the worst that could happen? We'll get rid of some stuff. Get rid of all this shit. Until next time, please take care of each other.